it's hotter than the surface of the sun in this studio right now. Hey shoe hounds and those interested in future footwear frolics. It's Ed Mystic Meg Bud here today with an episode of Running Shoe Yay or Nay. I'm going to be looking at some soon to be released models. Perhaps they've just hit the retail stores and letting you know whether I'm going to be picking up a pair of these running shoes or not. It's not me saying whether the shoes are trash or brilliant. I can't really tell that unless I get them on foot. I'm just telling you whether I'm going to pick them up or not to review them. It could be that somebody else will do them more justice. Four shoes for you today, and here they are. The Nike React X Infinity Run 4. The One Degree Beyond 361 Degrees Centaur. Some Paul Daniels Magic. With the Asics Magic Speed 3. And last but not least, we've got the Hoka Mac X. Yay or nay, let's get to it. Thanks for tuning in people, help the channel out by subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up like, you know it makes sense. Shoe number one today, let's get right into it. It's the 361 Degrees or One Degree Beyond Centaur. Now this one's been out for a few weeks but it's firmly on my radar. People really seem to be into that very popular max cushioned mould but now we've got max cushioned shoes that don't weigh the same as an elephant. I've really enjoyed the Triumph 21, the Nimbus 25, the list goes on. All of these shoes seems to come in at around about 290 to about 330 grams in my size at least and the 361 Centaur appears to fit into that bracket. We've got a similar stack of about 29 millimeters in the sample size, so probably for my size it's going to be more like 35, 36. And I'm very, very pleased to see a compressed sort of pellet TPU-like material here. I imagine it's going to be something along the lines of that float ride stuff. That works really well for me. Comments on that midsole so far appear to suggest it's got a nice endorphin-level squash and a little bit of a denser feel. It's all things that people seem to really love right now. That could make this shoe somewhat better for those heavier set runners, but also offering those who are a bit lighter some very maximally cushioned rides without the excess of some of the other bulky offerings. The profile reminds me a little bit of a shoe like the Pegasus 35. Certainly in that heel there, it's got a beautiful flare to it. And this ample heart rubber on the outsole. That stands for high abrasion rubber technology. It's got nothing to do with the band. I'm very keen to branch out a little and try some new brands and models. The everyday stuff's just been done to death a little bit, hasn't it? I did go onto YouTube the other day and look around at some of the videos and it's kind of like, this is the next great shoe and this is the next great one and this next one's better than them and... Yeah, you catch my drift, right? This one clocks in at 120 smackaroonies here in the UK. That's a great price for this level of cushion. I think a good video could also be had comparing this one up to something like the Triumph 21, maybe the Magnify 2 from Puma, and the Gel Nimbus 25. So it's a yay on the Centaur from 361. Let's go one degree beyond. Or let one midsole beyond, maybe. Something like that. Yeah, I think the moment's gone there, Ed. We'll move on. Shoe two. Next up, it's the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull version of the Infinity Run from Nike. This is the fourth version, but this time it's not just standard React, it's React X. So apparently what that means is it's 13% softer than React. So I tried to find some energy return figures here for React, but I couldn't find anything other than the fact that React apparently has 13% more energy return than Lunalon. So React X has got 26% more energy return than Lunalon. So if that means anything to you, then fantastic. Numbers, numbers everywhere. Apparently old EVA blends are like 50 to 60% in terms of energy return. Non-EVA blends up to 70 and something like Zoom X, that PBAX one is about 85%. I think they measured like the air units in the Alpha Flight like 90 or something. So it's got an interesting segmented flyknit like setup here in the new Infinity Run. Appears to have a smaller tongue area, a little bit like the New Balance 1080 V10, 11, 12, yeah. And those stretchy flyknit portions throughout the toe box and lateral and medial sides. There's a thicker padded sort of collar area around the heel and the typical Infinity Run heel clip is also back again. Gotta get a bit of silicon in there somewhere, cats. 
I do wonder if it's two separate slabs of foam here in the Infinity Run 4, but something tells me that they've just painted it a different colour. That's been Nike's trick for donkey's years. It looks like there's two different parts, but there's not. And they're using a whole ad scheme here to suggest that React X is way better than React, so including some React in there would be a little bit weird. Interesting to see that we got a full length rubber outsole this time round, although it's got lots of perforations. More perforations, in fact, than a tea bag. Lots of holes that start wider and larger in the heel, then they get progressively smaller as you reach the front of the shoe. Nike have let the Infinity Run model stagnate a little bit, so it's good to see that they're switching up the midsole material here, adding in a little bit of excitement. It's kind of like when you go and watch a firework display and they just keep putting on Catherine wheels. You know, does anyone really like them that are like past six years old? I like the ones that fly up in the air and go bang. There's loads of other options out there that are a little bit lighter than the Infinity Run series. I think where the Infinity Run was absolutely usable about four years ago or whatever when it first came out, I think they really had to switch it up this time to give people some reason to want to pick it up. And React is a bit weird as well. There appear to be a whole bunch of different versions of it. It's not just one sort of formula. So whether React X is one of those other formulas of React, I don't know. Now, they are advertising this shoe at $160. It's releasing very soon. I am tempted though to pick up this one just to see what the midsole's all about. Uh, it's a new foam and I'm a sucker for that type of stuff. So it's a yay on the Nike React X Infinity Run 4. I expect this to release very soon, maybe in July 2023. Shoe 3 and it's the Asics Magic Speed 3. Finally, this one sees a launch in two different colorways over in select stores the official ASICS online retail site and on sportshoes.com. There's a blue and yellow version along with a white and red variant with a loaded stack there of Flight Foam Blast Plus. Oh, you could just dive into it, can you? I can't get over how close this shoe now looks in profile to the Metaspeed Sky and the Sky Plus. The upper very close, in fact. It's almost like they've kind of grafted it onto this shoe. Perhaps it's somewhat of a domino effect where you've got that shoe kind of filtering down and they've got a new model coming in soon with a different upper like a waterfall style thing do you know what i'm talking about at all maybe i've just had too much sun we see a substantial midfoot cut out here in the underside of the shoe and some additional rubber sections which spread back into the lateral sides of the heel probably to allow a bit of protection to that midsole foam though as we know flight foam blast plus is a darn sight more durable than flight foam turbo that stuff seems to shred a little bit like someone's put a cheese grater on it or something it does seem like asics have positioned the tongue very carefully here with padding on both sides under the area where the final eyelets are, perhaps in a bid to reduce a little bit of the pressure from the laces. I never found the tongue to be particularly thin or unworkable really on the Metaspeed Sky Plus, certainly one of the most comfortable race shoes I've worn. Something here tells me this one's more of a trainer, it's got a slightly more plush feel. Now the density of the foam is something I'm keen to know about. I did feel this foam was rather thick and kind of firm and dense in the Nimbus 25. I wouldn't suggest it was like unforgiving or anything but it's certainly a lot more dense than the turbo variant is it gonna fit a sort of higher tempo shoe i don't know i haven't tried this super blast i haven't had the opportunity and it's quite a pricey one really does that work for you let me know in the comments people it does sound like this shoe is going to be only marginally heavier than the metaspeed sky plus that's at least in the sample size and let's not forget that is a race shoe it's a bit more minimal one of the lightest super shoes actually in my collection right now i've got to be honest it's gonna have to be yay on the magic speed 3 these are all updates that i'm seeing in this shoe that were one that made me kind of avoid the magic speed 2 i will be testing it out if the opportunity does come up a lot of yays in today's video maybe i'll need to be a bit more scrooge like okay last one today is shoe 4 it's the hoka mac x now this is a very interesting one hoka seem to be advertising this one as a do it all sort of plated super shoe we have a p-bax plate here now p-bax you might say well it's a foam well they can actually make sort of like more rigid plastic plates using it too 
2. You've seen lots of those in something like the Mizuno shoes, for example. And we've got one of those right here in the Mac X. So it's a bit of a sandwich. We've got some P-Bax foam, then this P-Bax plate, and then what appears to be a more firm and sort of resilient ProFlight X midsole material we've seen previously in some Hoka shoes. I did wonder initially where they were going to position this shoe in the Hoka lineup, but it's a bit clearer to me now. It should be nice and nimble when pushed due to the plate and the relative lightness of the shoe at 266 grams for the sample size, it's not going to be too clog-like on some of those longer, slower runs. It's kind of an interesting niche area, really, trying to produce a plated shoe that covers lots of different ground. Perhaps this one will be something like the Energy X from Reebok. That was a really quite versatile shoe. It did lots of things and it did it very well. There's a hint of support there with the midsole cupping up and around the foot on the lateral side, but using that firmer foam to sort of guide the softer p layer. Perhaps almost like an endorphin speed, but for Hoka. That upper is very reminiscent of the fantastic Hoka Rocket X2. That is a top three shoe for me in 2023. Some of you complaining I hadn't sort of used any Hoka shoes in a while, well I absolutely love that Rocket X2. It ticks all the boxes for me, it really does fly. I'm happy to see that there's something atop of this midsole setup that is a little bit close to that Rocket X2 upper. Not too generous in the toe box room. A nice foot hugging feel enables you to get really good lockdown on top of that midsole. Now this one appears to be launching very soon. There's like a coming soon thing up on the site. It's going to be 160 smackaroonies here in Earth Credit Land. So it's a good 60 quid cheaper than the Hoka Rocket X if you count it. The outsole is even similar to that Rocket X2 in its rubber allocation and positioning. All of this makes me think that this one's going to hit the spot and tick the boxes. A versatile beast with a nice hugging upper and an interesting midsole combo. What more does a shoe geek want? So slightly more maximally stacked than the Rocket X2 by a couple of millimetres and perhaps a more forgiving plate than the carbon one that we get in the Rocket X2. That makes it a yay for the Hoka Mac X. So that's four out of four today. I can hear my wallet screaming already. What do you make of my thoughts on these shoes, people? Have I got it right or wrong? Which one would you pick up if you could only have one pair? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A very quick musical interlude for you. I've been listening to Noel Gallagher's new album recently, and I kind of went back to refresh myself on definitely maybe Oasis's first album. I always remember it being this sort of brick limited sort of album. It was just really, really crunched and crushed and compressed. But fantastically, they've actually done a remaster on it and it sounds like it's got a lot more life. It doesn't feel like it's been squashed to an inch of its life. Rock and Roll Star, for example, sounds particularly punchy and dynamic now. The drum's really kind of cutting through a bit more. Sounds like they've done a little bit of EQ to things as well to kind of even out the sound. Sounds a lot fuller and bigger than my original CD version even. So it does go to show that sometimes technology can be beneficial. I'm not entirely sure that I'm on board with all this AI business that's been around recently, where they've been creating tracks from artists that simply aren't around anymore. It's kind of weird. I know that there is a Beatles track coming soon. They've managed to lift John Lennon's vocal off of some other recording using some new technology, but I'm still not really dead set about that stuff. I think it's a bit of a swizz. So go and check out Definitely Maybe. I think you'll be quite impressed and actually a little bit surprised at how good it sounds these days. Now they've kind of given it a bit more life again. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you enjoyed the yay or nay. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. It really does help out. My name's Ed Bird, and I'll be seeing you.